Welcome back to the rest of the story. I'm just about ready to start working on this 8235R. What I want to do before we say this tractor is done for the year, because it is parked back out of the way in the machine shed, and we probably won't be moving it again here for several months, unless the weather really straightens out and we're able to, to use it again for any fall field work. Uh, the only thing we need it for at this point is for applying in hydrus and it's it's just now looking very promising now this tractor has had a power issue basically ever since we've gotten it and i was told the other day and i knew about these kill switches i really did i just never thought it would come down to the point where we would actually say we need to install one. Um, all we're really doing is we're removing this negative ground cable here off these two terminals and we're adding in the switch and it'll remove the negative ground to these batteries and essentially cut off all power to this tractor. Um, I, I really do believe myself that um, we are having a little bit of a, a low voltage battery pull somewhere uh, even when the tractor and the key and everything is off I mean there's a lot of electrical all over this tractor I mean it's really believable that something isn't working exactly how it's supposed to and the globe I was told was potentially a major culprit so this kit really isn't all that expensive it was right around a hundred bucks it uh, I don't know if this was a hundred bucks and I think it's the other way around the the heater for the engine was like 110 109 somewhere in there and this was like around 150 160 and there's really not much to it and I'm really thinking I can have it done here in about a half hour excluding the amount of time it takes me to uh, to film it so I'm gonna go ahead and do the first couple steps and I'll get caught back up with you guys. I have the cables or the old cable removed. Eh, I didn't need that anyway. I have the old cable removed. Uh, threw it aside because we're replacing it with a different cable. I gotta rewire the new cable up through back in here somewhere out to where the switch is going to be mounted. I already have the two bolts in where this is going to go. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, two separate brackets. This is basically just so you don't uh, kick it. It's going to mount uh, just, just like that up out of the way. Probably going to catch it with their foot maybe a little bit but and there's plenty of room up in there that you can engage and disengage the switch. I have to go through and wire this cable through. And well, it's two separate cables, but get this ran through and then get that connected. And we should be pretty well set to tighten everything down. So. Let me get that next step, step done and I'll show you what I all got put together. And this is the finished product. I went through, got everything put away like it's supposed to be. Got this windshield washer fluid tank mounted back in and this is pretty straightforward. From start to finish, this took me probably right around 30 minutes, and it's really not that bad. And the worst part was over here. Well, as far as this right here, there is a space up underneath behind this tank uh, that you can run these wires through, because these wires run up, and there's a space through the or above the fuel tank here that allows you to get the the cables through and the worst part was pretty much getting the cables attached to the switch and then 
getting it mounted because everything just doesn't want to bend and turn the way it should. And according to the instructions, I believe it told it, it says to install the switch first and then do the cables. But you can see, if you can see, how much room is actually up in there. Um, I can't hardly get my hand in there to really maneuver the cables around at all. And it was a lot simpler to connect the cables first, tighten everything down, and then go through and finish mounting it. The only thing that I didn't do that I probably should do yet, other than the, attaching this to these little this little bolt back here, I neglected to do that part. Of course, then again, you could just remove it all together and I don't know, set it off to the side. I guess it's a preference thing. I could just set it up in the cab and forget about it. Um, was this right here? I <laughs> this piece of steel is threaded, and to mount this, um, I had to take these two bolts out and use the two that were provided in the kit. And with this being threaded, and it goes through, and these nuts go on the end here are on this side it really doesn't it doesn't allow you to draw the bolts in the rest of the way and i really could should potentially possibly will just go through and drill them out and that way i'll be able to suck these down all the way so the heads are flat against the steel right here and it'll be mounted properly i can do that or i can just say leave it alone so I did torque these down really tight and to be completely honest it's really not hurting anything I mean it's not like we're gonna catch them on anything at all but uh, the switch does work I just had the hazard lights on and disconnected it and it did exactly like it's supposed to so right now with that switch out removed like it is the tractor is completely shut off of power and the battery shouldn't have any drain to them for the long term protects the the life of the batteries like throughout the rest of the winter because i think you guys can hear me over top the rain but it's raining really good right now and as things stand right now the 82 is parked for the winter the 46 is still hooked up to the chisel plow and what i'm hoping is is that this rain that we're getting today in the next couple days plus the 35 40 degree weather that is here with it it is muddy out right now and really soft. You can spin. I was spinning with the gator, just trying to get around the field a little bit that I had to. So I'm hoping that there's gonna be a 12 to 24 to 36 hour time frame there where I can go out and chisel at least one more, one more really long day for what, it'll, for what it'll end up being, or at least until I get froze out again and at least get the farm that I live on done. There's another 60 acres on that yet, which is probably about another 10 to 12 hours worth of work. And at least to get that field done would be really nice. Ryan did get into the mud with the 82 the day he ran it. And all this mud was acquired down in the grass waterways at the home farm where the soybeans were left standing. And also down where I have corn standing yet so I told him to just go through and wing it with the, the disc, the VT, the tillage tool as best he could and try to knock down as much corn as he could because at this point it's not gonna get harvested. I mean, it's not worth it for an acre, less than an acre. And he didn't get down very far. He knocked out maybe six rows, but in the area where it's the worst, where there's about six inches of water standing, where the corn is standing in six inches of water, uh, there's, there's ruts from all eight tires in the ground. He was spinning pretty good. And you can see that on the window there. So before we go to use it next spring, it's gonna be washed off, cleaned off, cleaned out, windows washed and everything, and then it'll be cleaned and ready to, uh, ready to work again for another year. But as far as this project goes, that is it for this. I gotta clean up all the tools and shut the hood back up and we'll call it good, at least until I need to probably change the oil on it. More than likely, I have to change the oil on it for next spring. So, 
be optimistic, maybe we can do it in Hydrus, but it's not looking good. So you guys are watching the rest of the story. Take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later.